I was hired to get this guitar back into the United States. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. That's right, this is an interesting one. I had to bring this Gibson guitar from Japan back to the United States. However, there was a little bit of a catch here. Many dealers have non-compete clauses within their contracts with companies that don't allow them to ship certain things overseas. So this wasn't as easy as, you know, calling up the Japan store and saying, hey, ship it to me. Because Gibson has a contract that says you can't ship new things out. Now they don't care about used, but a viewer of the show had to have this guitar. So he messaged me to see if it was possible and since I've got an inside guy currently named Daniel is that his real name or not you'll never know we were able to get it here so this is our spooky escort mission guitar so what was the guitar that was so special to go through all this hassle for let's find out it was a made-to-measure custom order for the shop named Ishibashi now, if you're not familiar with them, they are essentially the Japanese equivalent to like our guitar center as far as like how many stores they have across their country. So it's not a little small mom and pop shop if they can afford a couple of these custom orders. So there's actually more than one of these out there, but he wanted this particular serial number. But let's go ahead and see what this thing's all about. Probably wondering, how does this tie into Spooky Guitar Month? It's got an orange slash yellow case. It's a spooky black color. It kind of works. But basically, this is a 68 style SG as far as the old Batwing pick guard. We've got three pickups in here. The white guard really contrasts against everything else. It was very lightly aged, so we'll kind of see that a little bit more on the workbench as far as how cool that white pick guard is. But this is a very uniquely specced out Les Paul Custom. That's right, even though it has 68 specs, I guess they're going for the earlier 60s variation and we're still calling the SG the Les Paul. So that makes this thing interesting. We actually have the late 60s style nylon saddles here, so I mean, I, I really don't know what they were going for when specking this crazy beast out, but it's kind of cool. It's got a really chunky neck. Oh my goodness, if you hate SGs because they usually have thin necks, don't have to worry about that on this bad boy because it is nice and chunky. Well, let's check out what kind of case can do we have. And we'll start things off with this. We have a basically a fake COA that the Ishibashi shop made for it. It's got a signature by whoever packed it or something like that. But it's got its serial number and tells you all about what this model is. A custom three pickup long Maestro Vibrola. Ebony in VOS. Oh, and that's right. If you're one of the more astute viewers, the COA has a typo on it. Finest guitars. <laughs> And it looks like we got a couple of other goodies. I would assume this is some sort of a receipt. The Gibson pre-pack checklist, which shows you when they had completed it at the factory. We can see the official model is actually a 63 SG. Okay, looks like regular hang tags for a historic style guitar of this nature. That also says the same thing. A couple of hang tags. But check out the sweet owner's manual. It's got a sticker on it, which I'm not quite sure what that says, but I'm sure somebody will put it in the comments. And basically it just tells you how to string up the guitar, general maintenance and care. A giant Gibson pick so you can strum this thing professionally. Nah, just kidding. I think it's a decal. Case key, silica packet. Yeah, all the good stuff. I don't know about you guys, but this thing is sweet looking. You don't find a black SG custom too often, and this one puts it to the tens. So let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench, take a look at its parts and specs, and see how badly it stays in tune. <laughs> All right, inside this freak of an SG. Unfortunately, I can't show you the bottom side of the pick guard. The bridge pickup lead is too short, so I can only get it to go this far. So we can see things like a really clean tenon, like sometimes SG tenons can be pretty yucky. And then that does extend into the cavity for a formal long neck tenon. But you'll just have to take my words on these photos that I took. But this is not a big swimming pool route. You can't just put whatever you want in here. It actually does have strips of wood in between each of these. As far as the pickups, they're reportedly the Custom Bucker Alnico 3. All three of them are that. The pickups have the patent applied for decal on them. Here's some photos you can check out. 
Now what's interesting here is that this one has two bridge pickup versions. I get asked that all the time. What is the proper way to lay out a three pickup Les Paul or SG? Because traditionally the neck pickup faces this way. You've got your adjustable pull pieces up here and then bridges, they have them down here. Traditionally it's neck, neck bridge, but some guys do bridge, bridge, neck. Does it really matter? I, I don't think so, but normally I see it the other way. So our bridge pickup is reading 7.67. That's nice and vintage PAF inspired. 7.79 for the neck. Now let's have some fun. 3.9 in the middle. That sounds about right. So the way Gibson traditionally does three pickup guitars, it's neck, bridge, bridge in middle in kind of a slightly out of phase tone. It gives you real single coil like tones. It's not exactly that, but if you just don't like Fender guitars and you want a kind of a single coil tone in your collection, I suggest getting a three pickup Gibson wire traditionally. But now the bridge is a little bit special. I already told you about the nylon saddles. That's a late sixties thing. And of course it says Gibson ABR one on the back. However, I want to talk about the thumb wheels. They're actually thicker than usual. They're slightly domed up on the top side. Maybe it's something I just never noticed before. Or maybe it's a historic spec that I just don't know a lot about. Now the long tram or the Gibson Maestro Vibrola. It's got a liar on it right there, kind of a small harp thing. They etch it with Gibson. Basically the way these things work is they have four screws on either side. You can take them off and then that just reveals the base underneath it. And what you'll find are two screws that actually secures this vintage style Vibrola to it. So everything down here is just for cosmetics. It looks cool. And that's why people still want these on their SGs, despite not being the best for tuning stability. But the ball ends of the strings go in here and then you just wiggle that around and have a lot of fun. So if you lube all that up, make sure your nut is cut properly and have your strings wrapped properly on your tuning pegs, you should have relative tuning stability. But you also shouldn't be using this as a Floyd Rose dive bomb. It should just be light shimmers. As far as the contours of the body, they're nice and sculpted, nice and pointy. But here's what I was telling you earlier, the aged pick guard edges. You can see how it's been nice and yellowed. Now it would have been cooler if the white could have got a little bit more of a yellow effect to it, but I do appreciate the fact that they did it to the side because that really transforms this from looking like a, you know, modern day SG into, you know, maybe it's supposed to be some sort of like a historic reissue. And while the pick guard has a little bit of aging to it, the rest is just VOS, so it's not like thin finish checking aging going on here. So VOS means things like they will slightly dull the gold hardware like you're seeing right here, just to give it a the look of it's sat in its case since the 60s. I mean, your Vibrola has a little bit of that to it as well. However, as far as the body goes, it was a pretty mild VOS job. This is what every VOS should look like in my opinion. Like the one that always stands out to me is like the Peter Frampton three pickup ones. They're great guitars, right? They're really cool. They have all the fancy wiring options, but the VOS job is, it's just too heavy on those in my opinion. This is like that beautiful happy medium. But how about this? Witch hat knobs. That's pretty Halloween-y, right? But you'll notice it's labeled volume, volume, tone, tone. So that means they didn't affect any of the wiring, which is really strange coming from a custom order. I thought for sure maybe they would consider doing three volumes in a tone, which is common to do. But now to match our beautiful ebony finish, we've got a straight up ebony fretboard. You've got the mother of pearl blocks. They use some pretty nice materials here. Oh, especially that one, that's nice. But you've got 22 frets here. Looks like they're 0 0.06 tall. A nut width of 1.67. That increases to 2.06 by the 12th. And wow, that is a chunker, 0.95 at the first fret. And a boisterous 1.04 by the 12th. According to the official specs, it is an authentic 64 medium C shape. Despite the COA saying 63 SG. I mean, this thing is just all kinds of specs. And here's that neck at the first fret and the 12th fret. I mean, you can just see how narrow and rounded it is at the first fret. And then it kind of chunks up a little bit to get you more of a regular C shape. But I mean, it's a really full feeling neck, which is refreshing on an SG. And we got that beautiful Gibson logo here with our Klusen waffle back tuners. We'll see more of those on the back. But our truss rod cover is that cool historic style one that reads Les Paul. Our truss rod is looking perfect. That's kind of interesting here, seeing as this was kind of like new old stock. I mean, it sat in the store for a good couple of years. You can see a line forming right here. Now that's not a crack or anything that happened in shipping. That's just where the nut actually ends. You'll see that on both sides. 
That's pretty common to happen after a couple of years. But I was kind of surprised to see this. You see this little pinkish hue right here? That's stand rash. So that tells me this was hanging up in a store. That's not too bad. Most people probably wouldn't even notice that. But it caught my attention just because I was looking for it. So here we go. We've got it all set back up. So after some light use, it seems to have kept the tuning that it was at anyways. But that was after lubricating the saddles and the nut. So we'll see what results I can get in the playing demo. But first, the backside. We'll take a look at our electronics first. Seems to be Gibson's regular stuff. Gibson branded pots, all relatively neatly wired in there. But what's really cool is the backplate matches the pick guard. It's white. You don't normally see that, but it just has a good contrast here. Looks nice, tuxedo vibes. The routing job seems to be pretty clean as well, but you can see through straight to the mahogany body. But historic SGs are always kind of cool. I mean, sure, you get slightly more beveled edges to make them a little bit more evil. But did you know that their bodies actually extend onto their necks? I remember the first time I ran into this was on the SG Elegant series, and I thought it was like some sort of a weird repair. Now, I can't tell you what years specifically get that, so maybe that is another weird spec that's blent onto this one. Because I don't really specialize in the SGs. Like, I, I know the basics enough to get me by, but honestly, SGs, they're just not my favorite. It's not that they're not cool. It's just I much prefer Les Pauls and Explorers within the Gibson lineup here. But a beautiful chunky neck on this one. And all this back here also has a very light VOS job to it. I'm curious if the shop custom ordered it as light VOS or if they just naturally polished it off. I could see Japanese shops doing that and just wanting the very, very mild job. And here we can see those awesome Klusen waffle back tuners. Probably the coolest tuner to ever exist. However, as far as functionality goes, the vintage ones are terrible, but it's probably just because they didn't age well. But the modern reissue ones usually function pretty good. And the serial number is stamped on the back of the headstock. All said and done, this beast is 7 pounds, 11.9 ounces, so a little bit under 8. But it seems to be very well balanced. We'll have to check it on a strap, but I don't think this one's going to neck dive. And I'm sure the Vibrola helps with that. But let's go ahead and plug this one in and hear how it sounds. Let's go ahead and run through the tones here. Starting with the neck dive test though. This is actually a really good SG as far as balance goes. Like if you nudge it, it falls a little bit, but it's not one of those guitars that you're going to have to support the neck. And that's great if you're trying to do like intricate fingerings on like the chord sections. Right there is why I love three pickup Gibsons wired traditionally. It's such an interesting tone. having problems with is the pickups are really close to the strings it kind of makes it hard to pick and normally I don't have too much issue with three pickup guitars but two humbuckers right here where I like to pick it would definitely make more sense to pick around the neck area on this one if you want to get super aggressive but in doing that it makes it really hard to do palm muting at the same time so you can easily remedy that by just lowering one of these pickups let's go ahead and give some dirt a try <laughs> Thank you. 
kind of makes it hard to play for my style. But let's go ahead and uh, test out the whammy bar here. just about as good as all the rest of them expect to have to tweak it a lot now to be fair maybe these are newer strings i didn't change them to give them a fighting chance so they could still be stretching into place but if you're buying an sg that has one of these just know that in advance <laughs> Now that we know all about the finest guitar in Japan, what are my final thoughts on this thing? Fantastic looking SG slash Les Paul custom thing here. This is a very sweet ride. It's got those tuxedo vibes. If you want this, but on a slight budget, check out the Celebrity Series guitars. They're from 1991-ish, you know, plus or minus a year, depending on a few factors, but they have that whole black and white vibe. Now they're kind of expensive, about half the price of this guy, if you can find a really clean one. It's not going to be as fancy as this sweet Les Paul custom, but it's a good alternative. But as far as an SG that balances well and looks awesome doing it, fantastic. However, I wasn't a big fan of playing this one, but if I messed with the pickup heights, I'm sure I probably would have enjoyed it a little bit more, but this is how it came stock. So if you have a guitar in Japan that you might need some assistance on, sometimes I can help, not all the time, as my friend is occasionally busy, but this one just happened to work out because it was at a local store near him. All right, troglodytes, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.